Today we will be discussing the forms of precipitation. These include rain, snow, sleet, and hail. The first form of precipitation that we'll be discussing is snow. Snow forms when water droplets in a cloud freeze, turning into ice crystals. The ice crystals collide or bump into other water droplets and ice crystals. When that happens, they freeze together, causing the ice crystals to grow. This process continues until the ice crystal is too heavy to be held up or supported by the cloud. The ice crystals then fall down through the atmosphere to land. In order for the snow to stay frozen though, the air below the cloud must be right around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If the air below the cloud was warmer than that, the snow would melt and turn into rain. The second form of precipitation that we'll be discussing is rain. Much like snow, rain begins with water droplets and tiny ice crystals in a cloud. These tiny water droplets and crystals collide or bump into each other until they become too heavy to stay in the air and they fall down to earth. In order for it to rain, the air below the cloud must be warmer than 32 degrees, the freezing point, so that the ice crystals and the water droplets don't freeze as they fall. That way they stay as liquid. So a common misconception is that rain falls when the clouds get too heavy. Actually, that's not the case. Rain falls when the water droplets become too big or too heavy to be held up in the cloud. Also, it doesn't rain when, whenever we need it to. Think about floods and droughts. It, if it rained when we needed it to, we wouldn't have those issues. If you'd like to learn more about how rain is formed, try this experiment. It shows how water evaporates and then condenses in the clouds and falls to earth. All you need is a cup, a plate, and some warm water. Don't forget to have adult supervision when you're conducting an experiment at home, just because the water is a little bit warm in this experiment, so I'd like you to be careful when you try it. The third form of precipitation that we will discuss is sleet. Sleet is rain or snow that melts as it falls to the ground, but freezes before hitting the ground. This happens because snow or rain falls through a section of warm air as it's falling, turning it into little water droplets. But before these droplets reach the ground, they pass through another area of really cold air that's below freezing and freeze into little ice pellets. You can see a picture of them on the right hand side of the slide. Remember, sleet does not look like snow. It looks like little frozen raindrops. Our last form of precipitation is hail, and it's formed under very interesting weather conditions. Unlike the other forms of precipitation, the air temperature under the cloud doesn't matter. It can be warm or cold. Hail can even form in the summertime. Hail forms in huge thunderclouds when a strong upward wind called an updraft moves through the cloud, carrying water droplets high up into the cloud. These water droplets are carried up past the freezing level of the cloud, meaning that the air temperature in that part of the cloud is below freezing. The water droplets then freeze, fall back down to the lower part of the cloud, collect more water droplets, and then are carried back up into the freezing part by the wind. This process continues until the ice balls are too large to be supported by the cloud, and then they fall down to earth. Hail may look similar to sleet in pictures, but it's generally much larger than sleet. As you can see by the picture with a hail in the person's hand. Remember, Sleet is frozen rain and isn't much bigger than a raindrop. Here's another model of how hail forms. As you can see, the warm updraft, the red arrow, brings water droplets into the hail growth zone, the freezing part of the cloud. In the hail growth zone, the water particles freeze and collide with other water droplets, meaning they bump into each other where they grow bigger and bigger until they're too heavy to stay in the cloud. When that happens, the hail falls to the ground. Hail can become very large, even some as large as basketballs.
All right, so now that we've reached the end of this presentation, I've included some technology websites that you can use to learn more about the forms of precipitation. If you'd like to see how air temperature and dew point affect the type of precipitation that forms, check out the first link. I've also included some more videos about each form of precipitation if you'd like to learn more.